What's going on, Dodgers Nation? Doug McCain here. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. For up-to-the-minute Dodgers news and rumors, be sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. And as always, I want all of your takes down below in the comment section. Do you think the Dodgers signing Nate Jones to a minor league deal is something, nothing, or everything? Let me know down below in the comment section. And if you were to trade for a reliever this year, who would it be? We've got some names coming up, but drop your takes down below in the comment section. And for all latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. The injury bug has really sunk its teeth into the Dodgers' bullpen this year, and they've been a below-average bullpen for quite some time. They're currently ranked 18th in overall war. They lead the league in blown saves, but they've had a lot of inexperienced relief pitchers. They really have no business in those spots going for them right now. But the Dodgers are starting to make some moves with this bullpen. Today, they signed Nate Jones. Alex Friedman tweet out, Dodgers have signed veteran reliever Nate Jones to a minor league deal, and he has joined the OKC Dodgers. He was with Atlanta earlier this season and has extensive Major League experience also with the White Sox and Reds. Now, in his prime with the White Sox, he was one of the better relievers in all of Major League Baseball. Last year with the Reds, he had a down year, did not pitch very well, had an 81 ERA+. plus. Then in spring training, he really turned things on. He had a really nice spring training for the Braves, made their opening day roster, but he did not have very much success early early on with the Bravos. In 10 to thirds innings pitched, that ERA, it doesn't look terrible at 348, but a 20% walk percentage, a 14% K percentage, and if you look at the hits, seven hits allowed per nine innings, that's just not going to get it done, and they DFA'd him. So is this a dumpster dive move by the Dodgers? Yes, it probably is. There's no question about it. He was struggling mightily with the Braves early on this season, but if they could find a way to get him right, he still has a plus heater, he's still a veteran presence, and he he could really help the Dodgers fill in some holes while this bullpen is still in flux waiting for guys to get healthy. You still have Corey Knable still over a month and a half away from returning and you don't know when's that next injury going to hit. The way it's gone this year, it's nice to have a backup down in the minor league level. And he's got to prove himself, but if the Dodgers can find a way to work their magic on him, maybe, just maybe, he contributes at the big league level. We'll see what happens with him, but let me know down below in the comments. Do you think this is something, nothing, or everything the signing of Nate Jones. Do you think he can have an impact at the big league level? But let's say the Dodgers want to go crazy and swing a trade. I've been saying even before this season started, even with a fully healthy bullpen, the Dodgers were going to make a trade for a bullpen piece. Here's some names I want the Dodgers to consider. Now, we're going to do a little more in-depth video next week about some of these names. We'll throw out some more names. But just to get us started off this year, now the first name is one where if the Dodgers want to go big, they could go after Richard Rodriguez this year in 15 innings pitch. He's got a .60 ERA. Opponents are hitting 100 off of him. He's issued one walk all season. He has a 2% walk rate. And if you look at that strikeout rate, it went from 36.6% last year down to 23.5% this year. The whiffs aren't there this year like they were last year. Now, he's not a high velo guy. He doesn't have that explosive heater. But what he does do is he locates really, really well. So you'll see that strikeout rate go up. Now, he's got a couple years of arbitration left. One won't be a free agent until 2024. Another name the Dodgers could go after is Cesar Valdez of the Baltimore Orioles. He's an older player. He's 36 years old. He spent a few years in the Mexican leagues, but since being back, he's been very effective. He's got that fastball changeup combo. He's effective against lefties and righties. And like I said, he's been really good in his second stint in the show. Since coming back in 2020, he's posted a 1-2-9 ERA with a .86 whip. So that's another name the Dodgers could look at. And another guy you guys have been asking me about lately is Gregory Soto of the Detroit Tigers. I'm not as high on him as some of you out there. He's got a 269 opponent's batting average. He's got that plus heater, but if you see the strikeout rate, 22.5%. The walk rate, 16.3%. He struggled early on, but the potential is there. The potential for him to be an elite reliever is definitely there, but it's just the consistency with Soto. Sometimes he'll look brilliant. He'll go out there, he'll give you those clean innings, he'll make it look effortless, and then he'll follow that up with a game where he 
doesn't have command of the strike zone. So if he can get more consistent, find that command, he is a lefty. So that could be a plus for this Dodgers bullpen. And most of the damage done against him this year have been from righties. Now, he hasn't been very effective with runners in scoring positions. That's something else to consider. But he's another name that could be out there and available for the Dodgers to pursue. And another guy the Dodgers could go after if they wanted to go big is Ian Kennedy of the Texas Rangers. He's been one of the best relievers in the league so far this year. He's only given up four earned runs through 15 innings of work. Right now, he has a 32.8% strikeout rate, a 6.6% walk rate. Opponents are hitting 211 against him. And look, he's on a one-year deal with the Rangers. He signed a one-year $2.15 million deal with the Rangers this offseason. He's already 36 years old, so it wouldn't require too much prospect capital to get a deal done. It's just how soon are the Rangers willing to unload and try to get some assets in return. They're already five games back in the AL West. They've got that new stadium they're trying to roll out and show their fan base that they're willing to compete, but I think they should move him and try to get some prospects. Now, this next name would definitely require a much bigger haul. You would have to give up some serious prospects, but how about Josh Stalmont of the Kansas City Royals? He's a local kid. He grew up in La Habra, went to Azusa Pacific. He's 27 years old, but he has the potential to be one of the best relievers in the game. He's got one of the best fastballs. We're talking triple digits. He can hit 102 on the gun. I mean, we're talking about a world-class heater that he pairs with that jelly legs curveball. Now, one thing he needs to improve upon is that walk rate. It's 13.4%. This year, it was 14.3% last year. Needs to get that lower. The strikeout rate last year was 33%. This year, it's 28.4%. But that will go up. This year, opponents are hitting 125 against him. So I like his potential, and he's going to be under team control for quite some time. He's still pre-arbitration at this point, so he's going to require a haul, and I don't think the Dodgers will give up very many key prospects for a reliever like that. I mean, it's just not in their MO. They haven't done this under the Andrew Freeman regime. And then there's the name that you guys always want to talk about, which is Josh Hader. Josh Hader of the Milwaukee Brewers, still one of the elite relievers in the game. I mean, this year, he's put up numbers that are better than video game numbers. He currently has a 47.3% K percentage. Opponents are hitting 102 against him. He's got a .75 whip. He's getting it done right now for the Brewers. I don't think they're going to make him available at this point. I think Milwaukee is fully going for it still, whether it be to try to win that division. There are three games behind the Cardinals at the moment or try to take that wild card spot. The NL Central has been a lot better than everyone thought it was going to be. And I think for the time being, they're fine with keeping Josh Hader and not trying to get prospects for him. Now, when it comes to the Dodgers, it just doesn't feel like it's their MO. It definitely hasn't been under Andrew Freeman to give up big key prospects for relief pitching. It's always a big risk. Anytime you unload key prospects for relievers, you don't want to have another Jordan Alvarez situation where you wish you had that one back. But if there was ever a year where the Dodgers and Andrew Friedman might want to go big game hunting for a reliever, now would be the year. Look, you don't know how Kenley Jansen is going to look like two, three months from now. You know he needs extended rest to be effective at the moment. You don't know how these injuries are going to pile up. This could be the year the Dodgers go out and get a guy that they think could either, one, be a rental for this season or be their future. So I definitely think it's definitely possible. But what Andrew Friedman has shown us is that if there's a need, the Dodgers will address it. They needed starting pitching in 2017. He went out and got you Darvish. He needed a position player in 2018. He went out and got Manny Machado. There's plenty of examples of Andrew Friedman addressing pressing needs, and this could be the glaring one that they go after this season. And there's going to be guys available. But let me know down below in the comments, which of the names I mentioned today do you want to see the Dodgers trade for? Is there someone I didn't mention that you want to see the Dodgers trade for? And how do you guys feel about Nate Jones? How do you guys feel about the Nate Jones signing? Let me know down below in the comment section. My name is Doug McCain. You guys can follow me over on Twitter and Instagram at DMAC underscore LA. That's at DMAC underscore LA. For all things Dodger baseball, be sure to subscribe to the Dodgers Nation YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell. And if you want to see even more Dodgers content, smash that like button. For all the latest Dodgers Nation merch, head over to gearup.la. For the latest Dodgers news, head over to DodgersNation.com. And until next time, think blue, bleed blue, and I'm out.